Hello, my name is Ola, and I'm going to be reacting to Earthworm Jim Trilogy by Angry Video Game Nerd. This was requested by Rocco DeFrancisco, the local gamer, and Josh9180. Thank you for the request. Um, yeah, this is a recent uh, uh, episode from uh, Angry Video Game Nerd. It came out two or no, three days ago. Um, yeah, my first introduction to Earthworm Jim was actually the uh, Sonic for Hire uh, uh, series. Before, I had never heard of, never seen Earthworm Jim. Um, from there, I found out that, you know, he's a worm that jumps in the suit to, you know, be able to grab things, be able to run, walk, stand up, pretty much. <laughs> like, um, but, like, yeah, that's pretty much all I know about Earthworm, Earthworm Jim. Um, I've never seen, never played any of the games. Uh, but, uh, yeah, let's check this out and uh, see if there's maybe some that are good, some that are bad, or a bit of both. But either way, we're going to get a great video from the nerd. And, uh, yeah, check this out. And if you want to like, comment, subscribe my channel, can't if you want to, that's fine, too. Here we go. Spring is in full bloom, and I like to take advantage of it when I can to do more things outside, even watching movies. But sometimes apps like Netflix don't have all the movies I physically own, which is frustrating. And that's where our longtime sponsor, ExpressVPN, comes in to save the day. ExpressVPN is the skeleton key that unlocks the streaming content typically hidden from your geolocation. Just switch your location to another country like Australia to open up floodgates, and within seconds, you too could be watching the Alex Winter seminal classic, Freaked, without any buffering and in beautiful high definition. I'm not sure if seeing that in HD was an improvement over the VHS, but it feels good knowing that ExpressVPN can help me experience the movie on my laptop at the click of a button. And with servers available in over 90 countries around the world, whether it's Bollywood movies only available on Turkish Netflix or the latest horror films out of Japan, I never have to worry about finding what I need with ExpressVPN on my side. So find out how you can get yourself three months of ExpressVPN for free by going to expressvpn.com slash cinemassacre or by clicking the link in my description below. When I think back to the 90s, I think of two things, slapstick and crude humor. First, slapstick. Looney Tunes was still popular. You know, the physical comedy and visual gags were still being referenced a lot. <laughs> Animaniacs and Tiny Toons oh were like God. direct successors. Then there was Jim Carrey, whose oh, highly expressive face was Jim almost Carrey. like a cartoon, especially when he had a CG mask, makeover yeah. in The Mask. It was like a live action Looney Tunes character. Mm -hmm. And then the crude humor Dumb and, and bodily functions were on full display in Dumb and Dumber, which had all three. Piss, shit, and puke. <laughs> The Green Day album that year was called Dookie. Beavis yeah. and Butthead Beavis were at the peak, <laughs> and Ren and Stimpy had oh, been yeah. wreaking havoc the first half of the decade. It was clear the 90s was the age of the gross out, and it was also the 16-bit <sighs> era. Games of the period were flexing their new technology, showing off more complex character design and animation. Interplay gave us Booger Man, which fully embraced the gross out trend. The peak of the Turd Mountain, overlooking the Barf Marsh, and somewhere where the butt winds blow south to the vomit valleys and doo doo dunes, between the boiling ass canyons and solid wastelands, there lies Earthworm Jim. Somebody put pen to paper and said, How about a worm in a spacesuit? And from that point on, the world was never the same. The character appeared in many sequels, including Clay Fighter 63 and a third, which also featured Boogerman. Earthworm Jim had his own animated series, voiced by Dan Castellaneta, best known as Homer Simpson. Go Ruby! Oh, I didn't know that! When the first Earthworm Jim game came out, it was like nothing I had ever seen. And even though it was on both Genesis and Super Nintendo, and was nearly identical, I've always thought of it as a Genesis game. That's the one that came out first, the one I played as a kid, and that's the one I'll be playing now. Hmm. I have fond memories of this game. 
let's see if its inventive game mechanics, fun visuals, and sense of humor still holds up. Some may say it's all about boogers, but it's not. <laughs> Level not. one starts, and right away, the first thing you do in the whole game is you drop a fridge to launch a cow. It says, cow launched, as if you just completed some major objective. <laughs> cow launched? What purpose does that have? Where is the cow now? It has no effect on the rest of the game. You just launch a cow for no reason. It's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> on top of the zany humor, the character animation is so lively, it's like playing a cartoon. Since Jim is a worm, he uses his head like a rope or a whip. He can use it to attack enemies, he can twirl it like a helicopter, or he can hang on to stuff or swing across. There's no shortage of things the character can do, and the control is fluid and smooth. The way he interacts with the scenery feels natural. When he jumps on the pile of tires, there's a certain rebound that feels just right. The music is awesome. In this case, I prefer the Genesis because it has that gritty, bassy sound to it. And the sound effects are hilarious. All the little voices when Jim gets hurt, or the way the birds scream when you gun them down. And then you get to the boss and the guys making armpit farts while burping up fish. Amazing. I love when you complete the level, he says groovy. Groovy! You gotta love characters that say groovy. Groovy. Groovy, baby. Groovy. Level two, what the heck, is clearly what the hell, as in literally hell. And this has got to be one of the best all-time hell levels. I mean, just look at it. I'm getting major Disney Fantasia vibes, or mm -hmm. Don Bluth's All Dogs Go to Heaven. Oh, God. It's so awesome that I'm having a hard time consolidating everything I want to say. For the music, they use the classic Ride of the Valkyries, but then there's a record skip and it goes to something super peaceful. But every now and then, you hear somebody screaming. What's going on? The enemies well, I mean, are priceless. There's these After chopping all. monster things. And then there's lawyers. I guess they're making a joke about lawyers and hell. And then there's things you would never think of, like a snowman in hell. Huh? What are these things? Farting assholes? Yeah, are they buttholes? They're farting assholes! I like the evil cat who's in the background the whole time. Yeah. That actually turns out to be the stage boss, Evil the Cat. Yeah, just a cute little white cat, Aww. like Yeti, who keeps blasting fireballs out of cannon. It's little details like the recoil animation and how the cat stops to lick itself. It's great. Not to mention, Jim is out of the spacesuit, which oh, no. is funny just to remind you that he really is a worm. Mm -hmm. Level three is some underwater base. There's these little orange guys that are real unassuming, but if you go near them, they'll slam you around. <laughs> Man, that's so cool. You gotta mm -hmm. hop on a giant hamster to eat them up. What and next thing, you're in a little submarine. So this game is always giving you something new. It has a ton of variety, and I can't say enough good things about it. <laughs> oh. oh, fuck. Okay, <laughs> this part might be a problem. Controlling the submarine is not self-explanatory or intuitive. You have to turn the jet propulsions around so that they're pushing you in the right direction. It also gains momentum. You don't want to build up too much speed. If you hit something, it ricochets you back and you lose control. If the glass cracks too much, you're done for. So you want to take it slow, but you can't take it slow. There's a time limit. Mm -hmm. You got to get to the next checkpoint before you run out of air. Come on. Take it easy. Nice and easy. No need to rush. Whoa, that was close. Oh, fucker. <laughs> fuck! <laughs> uh. Oh, no! Oh, oh. Fuck it. You know what? <laughs> I take back everything I said. This game fucking sucks. No. I'm not even playing around. It's horse shit. Oh, God. <laughs> You know what? There's more levels. I shouldn't have done that. Yeah.
Oh, too late. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I know it's it's not. You didn't really break the game. It's a it's a copy or. If you make it past the submarine, next up is level four. Snot a problem. As in snot, mucus, boogers. Oh, yeah. It's fucking nasty. <laughs> the idea is to defeat the green guy, Major Mucus, by weakening his booger bungee cord till he falls. But don't get bitten in half by the snot monster below. <laughs> wow. It always impresses me how they keep making new death animations. Come on. Ah. 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 Oh. Come on. Ah. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Um, what happened there? Next is the aptly oh. named Level 5. Most notable things here, well, first, Jim gets separated from his suit, and you have to fight Professor Monkey for a head. That's his name, and that's what he is. I've got a monkey grafted to my head. The next stage is called For Pete's Sake. Ugh. It's an escort mission where you have to keep this little puppy safe. Aw, look at that cute little puppy just skipping around. Aww. So carefree. Aw, love that little guy. Oh, 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 shit! Oh my god, bro! So what with the a game that has so many fart sounds and mucus and gross out humor, all I can say is you haven't seen anything yet. Oh, Here shit. comes the grossest level in video game history. Oh, no. Intestinal distress. What the fuck? Ew. Oh. Ah. Uh, I don't want to look at it. Oh. What is that supposed to be? I don't want to know. Oh. Oh, oh. oh, boy. Oh. Yeah, I feel like I need a vomit Ow. bag, bro. Ow. Oh, gross. Uh. This is where they took it a little too far. Yeah. Somebody decided, hey, let's just go all the way and make it as disgusting as possible. On top of that, there's something real disturbing about the music. The whole thing just creeps me out. Yeah. Ugh. Oh, but the next and final stage is called Buttville. Buttville. Oh, no. Oh, n uh, okay. It's not so bad. Just a bunch of spikes and lightning. This part, you better be ready to die, die, and die. In the end, you defeat Queen Slug for a butt, and then rescue Princess What's-Her-Name, and then the cow, the cow from level one lands on her. And if you wait through the credits, they fall through the ground into lava. <laughs> Overall, it's a great game with great variety and great sense of humor, but has some frustrating parts. So there you go. <laughs> I'd like to introduce The Balance of Shit Justice. A game with no problems will sit in the green zone to mark its outstanding excellence. But with every flaw, every turd that drops on the other side, yeah. it moves the game into a worse zone. This one, by my assessment, is a rather good game, with a few turds weighing on it. Want some more? Well, I figured if I'm going to play through one game, I might as well play through the sequel, Earthworm Jim 2. Two. Consider this a bonus. First up, level one, anything but tangerines. Is it just me, or are things getting even weirder? You're lifting pigs out of pig pens, sending them down slides into fish bowls, putting them on boards of wood to raise weights, if you leave them alone, they meditate and float away. Whenever Jim what stands still, he takes a little guy out of his pocket and eats him. You're stealing motorized stair chairs from angry old ladies. And next, in level two, Lorenzen Soil, you're moving dirt around, which is probably the most worm-like thing Earthworm Jim has ever done. And what was that? What did he just do? Scattered in between are these recurring stages where you're bouncing puppies off a cushion or giant marshmallow trying to get them into a funnel or else they go splat. Damn, that's fucking brutal. Baby puppies splatting on the concrete? That's oh, no. fucked up. But you want to see some crazy shit? Level three, Jim's now a blind cave salamander. You're back in the intestines again. As if anyone wanted to see that. But now you look like an oxalotl. A fucking oxalotl. What's the what? theme of this level? There's weird membrane shit, pencils, Ugh. pinball parts, windows. Next thing you're plunged <laughs> into a game show all of a sudden. How does Jim spell his first name? Wow. I'm, I'm, uh. 
it begs the question. Who pitched this idea? And how in the holy mother of shit were they not dismissed as just being a total lunatic? It's as if the whole point was to make everything as random as humanly possible. That'd be like if I came to you and said, hey, I got an idea for a game. How about you're um, an Eastern Spadefoot Toad in the Helix Nebula, and you gotta stab foil chairs with rubber chickens, and out come marble giraffes, and you have to balance the giraffes on feather wreaths, and you take them to hot tubs full of salsa, which transforms the giraffes into cat trophies, which you have to collect and place all the trophies along a line of Twizzlers before a blue panda comes and eats them all, and then morphs into a giant ball of metal slime! I would have been like, James, get out of my house. You're drunk. Go home. <laughs> Let's play the game. Yeah. Level four, the Flying King. Uh-oh, somebody switched on the diarrhea dial. The suck power, that ass straw, has turned to full blast. It's bad enough that everything's trying to kill you, and it's like trying to dodge rain droplets in a thunderstorm like in Silver Surfer. But on oh, top no. of that, you have to keep track of this balloon that's carrying an explosive. You can't let it blow up and you have to keep pushing it all the way to the end of the stage. But you can't focus on the balloon because there's too many enemies to deal with. Also, whenever you beat a stage, the cows talk. Well done. I gotta ask, oh, what's the deal with all the cows? Some running joke, I guess? I don't get it. What is this preposterous preoccupation with cows? Just some random animal that you can't stop referencing? All right, let's play some more of this buffalo shit. Level 5, Utterly Abducted. Yeah, we're going full cow now. Here, you have to pick up cows and take them into these stables where the machine milks them. The milk fills the pail and lifts up the barrier. Next time, you need two cows, and then three, or else the barrier won't lift all the way. Did Jim ever think about ducking under the barrier? I guess that would make too much sense. Here's where it gets nuts. The cows can get abducted by aliens. And let me tell you, these aliens want these cows bad. They are persistent as fuck and never go away. That's my cow. Get your own. <laughs> you don't know the meaning of suffering until you've been hauling a cow over cliffs and almost making it to the stable only to have a UFO take the cow away. Man, I have some real beef with this level. Get your tractor beam Get off my fucking cow, you alien piece of shit! <laughs> if you lose the cow, you gotta go all the way back. If you die, you go all the way back. And if the cow explodes for no reason, you go all the way back! Yes, some of the cows are explosive, and you have a time limit to take them to a bathtub to defuse them. Who would think to do that? But that's not all. You have to find the cows in the correct order. You think maybe they put a little too much thought into this? The cows spawn from flowers. Yes, I didn't even mention that yet. The cows spawn oh. from flowers. If you come to a flower and it doesn't spawn the cow, that's how you know you've approached it in the wrong order. It would have really helped if they at least what had an arrow fuck? or something to guide you. But no, you gotta just take a shitty guess. Meanwhile, there's these oh magician eyes. coffins that I can't stop falling into. And if it's not already complicated enough, you have to launch the cow over with a cannon. But then you gotta get yourself over by swinging on snot. Oh my god, can you believe that shit? Oh man, there has to be another way over there. You can't go through? And there's a one-up just to tease you. Alright, well, I gotta go back. Fuck! <laughs> Next, in level six, inflated head, your worm head turns into a balloon and you have to dodge everything in sight. If you get hit by anything, it pops your head and you fall back down, down, down. It's as cheap as it gets. You know, variety is one thing, but when every stage is something wildly different, it starts to feel like you're constantly trying to learn a new game. It never lets you get used to one thing, just keeps throwing you these crappy curveballs. In level 7, ISO 9000, you're jumping across piles of legal paperwork. You have to carry mice in rolling cage balls and take them to certain destinations, but the real pain in the ass here is all the killer filing cabinets. These things will not chill. They just keep on coming, and they never, ever stop. Man, that's a shitty day. Yeah. Don't you hate it when you get stuck between a filing cabinet and a magician's coffin? I can't get over that filing cabinet. 
I know you're supposed to jump on the drawer, but I still can't get over it. He's gonna kill me against the wall. <laughs> level eight is called level eight, as in food. Yeah, you gotta love uh, food levels. This would have to make my top 10 food stages. Look at this, running from salt shakers and straws, literally whipping eggs, <laughs> hopping across all types of meat. <laughs> Got some burgers sizzling in the background. Wonder mm -hmm. if they're from the same cows. Level nine is a Maybe. secret level, which you can otherwise <laughs> skip past. It's called Totally Forked, which is a great name, but the Genesis version here just says Forked. So there's some regional differences, and I guess my region couldn't handle the joke. I wonder if there's any region that just straight out called it Totally Fucked. That'd be great. Level 10 is the final See level, Jim thank run, God. Run, it's called See Jim Run, Run Jim Run. This is basically nothing more than a race against the recurring nemesis, Psychro. Keeping up with this guy is almost impossible, with all these obnoxious barriers in your way and poorly placed pitfalls. It's unforgiving as hell, and if you accidentally get the gun that shoots bubbles, it's useless, and you have to give up. If you actually manage to stay ahead of Psychro and beat him to the finish line, Jim hails a cab, which crushes Psychro, he rescues Princess What's-Her-Name, and in a twist ending, all them turn out to be cows in disguise. Wow. Huh? Well, Earthworm Jim 2 was an ordeal. I thought James was joking. That's really her name. Princess, what's her name? <laughs> oh my god, I thought I thought earlier James was joking, but nope, that's actually her name. And they all turned out to be cows. Wow. Again, what's up with the cows, man? Like, do they did the people that make this just hate cows? Like, what's going on? The first one was mostly fun, but this one felt more like torture. So let's send it to the balance of shit justice. Well, as you can see, there's lots of turds weighing on it. I don't know, this one ain't the worst I ever played for sure, but too many turds. I think I've suffered enough, but there's another one. Earthworm Jim 3D on N64. Let's see how the franchise held up making the switch to 3D. So I'm putting in some overtime here, opening up a whole can of worms. And who'd want to do that? Uh. Worms are gross. And why would they be in a fucking can anyway? Mm. Okay, so the game starts up with the most uh. bizarre plot. Jim is in a hospital, unconscious, which is a very cheerful way to kick things off. His friends gather around, which includes Elvis for some reason. <laughs> so the whole game takes place inside Jim's mind, where everything he does is part of a big mission to gain his consciousness back. Right at the start, you're collecting marbles. Get it? Like he lost his marbles? But then he has to find some chicken's underwear? Yeah, I don't know what the underwear has to do with anything. I'm only briefing you on the situation. Uh. The humor gets a little more crude, the phrase clucking hell is used, and Jim flips you off with what seems like the middle finger. I mean, <laughs> he's flipping the bird, right? Yep. But the humor's gone so far off the rails, it doesn't or come could off just as funny pointing. anymore. Why is he shooting out leprechauns? I'm supposed to knock out enemies with a leprechaun? Yeah, take that! You want a leprechaun in your hood? It caters more to the animated series, which had already come and gone by now. So you hear a lot of the Dan Castellaneta voice, which keeps making me think of Homer Simpson. Worm power! Go! Ruby! Hey! I feel great! Win, win, win! Me, me, me! There's this one thing he keeps shouting. Oh. Sometimes it sounds like pain, other times like brain. Brain! I don't really know what it's supposed to be, but you hear it all the time. Brain! 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 Oh no. <laughs> Is that going to be the new Where Did You Learn to Fly? Brain! Huh. Another thing you gotta get used to is the music. The first stage has this sort of country sounding song and it just loops over and over and over. Then there's those disorienting camera angles. This is kind of like the curse of the time. It's what happened to many games of this era when they switched to 3D. So if Earthworm Jim already sucked sideways, now it sucks in three dimensions. Brain! The levels are designed with these huge open spaces, as if they made the level first and then didn't have time to put that many enemies in there. So most of the time, there's nothing to comment on. You're just running around. It's flat out boring. Reviewing this game would be like telling you about my entire day. 
I woke up, I got out of bed, it was a little bit cold, I put my socks on, I went to the bathroom, when I flushed I noticed the handle was a little loose, so I had to get that fixed. You don't want to hear all that shit. BRAIN! There's even a stage where you hear a ticking clock. Let me ask you, is a ticking clock ever a good thing? That's what you hear in school when you're taking a test or waiting for the bell to ring. Tell me any situation where a ticking clock is something that puts you in a good mood or gets you excited. That sound sums up this whole game. Brain! In order to keep sane, I have to do insane things like this. <laughs> There's the occasional funny thing to point out, like this Resident Evil spoof where chickens are jumping through windows. And this stage is called Poultry Geist, like the trauma movie. Lloyd would be very egg-sighted. There's also a ghost vacuum. Not like the kind in the first Ghostbusters game, but a literal ghost vacuum. Implying that vacuums can be alive in the first place and have a soul. Then there's a boss with a cannon coming out of its body. Now, come on. Why did they have to position the cannon right there? Brain! Even though this game is boring and uneventful, it's no cakewalk. It gets just as frustrating, probably even more so than the other games. First of all, those marbles. That's exactly what I want to do in a game. Go around collecting marbles. It's just as much fun as Superman 64, flying through all those rings. The worst part's when you die, you lose all the marbles, and have to start over. And there's quicksand everywhere. When you land in it, you can't jump. You're stuck and have to backtrack to get on the solid land. Then there's the knockback. When you get hit, it can knock you off the ledge. There's nothing fun about any of this. Ah! Jesus. Mm. Yes! <laughs> and if you want to know what the final boss is, it's a uh... character known as Earthworm Kim, who is essentially a female version of Earthworm Jim. The boss fight is long and tedious, and after it's over, you'd hope there'd be at least a good ending, but no, there isn't. Brain! Well, there you go. I beat the whole Earthworm Jim trilogy. Let's see how this one holds up on the balance of shit justice. Yeah, it sucks. It sucks. Well, the shit really weighs down on this one. I'd say this puts it in a very unfavorable category. Yeah. And if you want to put Earthworm Jim 3D on a scale with Jaws 3D, Fry the 13th 3D, and Amityville 3D, it doesn't even compare. It's not enjoyably bad. It's just bad. For those who have fond memories of Earthworm Jim, I'm here to remind you, it wasn't all fun. It's a mixed bag, but mostly stay away from Earthworm Jim 3D. Yeah. Well, anyway, that was three reviews, so let's end this thing. See you next time with more shitty games. Nice. Of course, freaking cow. <laughs> Still having to be the <laughs> cow wins. Yeah, I was about to say, like, oh my god, it's gonna end with a cow coming down, crash, crushing on James. Uh, nope. <laughs> it turns out James is the cow. <gasps> what? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that 3D just. Uh... The first two are pretty good. Especially the first one. The first one's the best one. Uh, except for that intestines level. Ugh, that one just uh, made me feel weird in my stomach. Just made me want to throw up. Ugh. Ugh. Second one was at least decent. Third one, yeah, it's complete garbage. It sucks. Uh, yeah, and I didn't know it had an animated series. And I did not know it, uh, he was voiced... By Homer freaking Simpson, man. Like, that's insane. I wonder if it was any good, you know? Any of y'all, if y'all have watched a show, at least one episode, you know, let me know, you know? Is it good? Is it okay? Did it suck? Like, <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, yeah, that's it. That's my reaction to Earthworm, Jim Trilogy. 
uh, by Angry Video Game Nerd. Yeah, I still don't get uh, what's up with the cows, man. Like, <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's it. And uh, everyone, take care of yourselves, each other. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.